Hello, what's up everyone? So to completely bridge off of everything that was just said, everything he's talking about theoretically is what I built. It's actually what my company does and what I've been working on for the last five years, essentially creating virtual nations and digital jurisdictions uh, and new models of identity that essentially model everything that we do around the idea that we as a human race are a community. The idea that we've leaned on third-party verification from institutions that have been built solely to keep record of contract is no longer a model that suits us. Because I exist, because, can you hear me? Oh, woo, there we go. There we go, can you hear me better? Better? Oh yeah, okay. I don't exist because a nation tells me that I exist. I exist because he might be able to say that we worked at a conference together. I exist because Chris and I have known each other and he can verify that he's seen me speak three times and I can do public speaking. This is actually our foundation called Web of Trust. We build a standard with the co-author of TLS and SSL, which if you've ever used the internet, uh, TLS and SSL are the encryption standards for the entire internet. And Web of Trust is changing our model of ownership of not only our identity, but all forms of our smart contracts into stewarded verification from people that you know personally. And my company is actually called, interestingly enough to follow up what just happened, my company is called Culture. And it's the simple thesis that the future of government and the future of the way that we organize as a human race will no longer be based on the model of nation states. It will be based on a model of culture, not on tribalism, violent tribalism, where you have one tribe that you're a part of, you have to fight another tribe, we have segmentation and difference. But on the idea that if we live as art, we can be a part of as many societies as we want to be a part of. So our model for this company is twofold. One is an open source standard that means everyone on the planet for free, forever, will have the ability to own access to their identities and their contracts formerly provided by nation states on a global jurisdiction that exists outside of the bounds of one particular nation. This is Web of Trust. We are a nation of people, not a nation of borders. And our for-profit business culture is essentially a platform for launching ICOs, no, not coins, but communities, initial community offerings. The ability for us to aggregate and share value around the things that matter most other people and the way that we contribute and share with each other. So I'd love to give you guys more context to, by the way, to tweet at me if you guys take any photos or videos during this presentation. My name is at Tony, T-O-N-I-L-A-N-E-C. And the website for my company is literally the word culture, C-U-L-T-U dot R-E. So, I'm excited to share more with you guys. I'll bring Chris up so we can um, have a little fun. We have some handheld mics. Do we have the little throwy thing, or are we going to stick with handhelds? Handhelds? All right. Um, I'm, I'm giving you this tease so that you get warmed up, because I, I want to turn this on now to you for questions with Tony. I'm going to tee us up, but that's just so that you get a question in your hand. So raise your hand if you have a question related to some of the stuff so that we can start to get you a mic. And I got one back here. Um, if you got another one, throw your hand up, and then uh, I'm going to ask one, um, and then we'll go to the crowd. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think anybody's not inspired by what you just said. I think it resonates with the, with the spirit of, of all of our humanity that, yeah. um, that this is just right. So yeah. conceptually, I think, I don't want to say everyone in the room, but I think there's a piece of us, no matter who we are, skeptic or optimist, that says, yes. Question, how do we get from today... Yeah pragmatically. For sure. How do we get from today where most of us don't even know, even if we are in this room and we're techno elite or techno savvy, yeah. we don't even know where our identity is today yeah. or which techno state or nation state owns it. Yeah. How do we get from that? And do we have to, because I don't know the answer, do we have to uh, wall that off? Do we have to migrate that? How do we get to 
your vision? Yeah. What's the steps? Yeah, so I mean, really simply, we work with, you know, like, I think there are 15 different nations that we have in the pipeline that are interested in actually exploring and web these are of communities. trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, as a standard to verify undocumented populations. So the way that we've actually constructed this as a model is that we're hospicing what doesn't work in old systems. Because you can't really approach someone and expect to win if you walk up to a national government and say, you suck, and then just like mic drop and like, so right. Walk away, like that doesn't work. And you have to essentially realize that these are institutions that were once built to serve a purpose and it transitioned us out of these kingdoms where we used to have, it was like tribal kings recorded everything because they could just have all of the contracts in their memory, all the agreements. And then you had kings and queens who kept record of everything because, well, they owned it all. So it's pretty easy to keep a record of stuff when mm -hmm. it's all yours. And then we had the nation model. And the nation model effectively said, we're gonna create these borders and these organizations so we have a record of property and ownership for citizens around the world. Now to get us out of that system and to transition us into the next generation, we have to realize that it's like we have to put grandma to bed. Mm -hmm. We have to hospice what doesn't work out of these systems and do that in a way that helps them to transition out of themselves. Because they're innocent people who they're bad people that work at government, but they're also innocent people who work there. And, yeah, yeah. And there's a life of its own. I think um, question was back here. Do we have a mic? Yes. Yeah. Great. Let's uh, let's go to the question here. We'll keep building on this. Yeah. Hello. Um, Hi. My name is Frederick Mayer. I was just wondering, how do you relate that to a self-sovereign identity? Yep. Yeah. And do you work with sovereign at all, or? Yeah. So sovereign is actually a part of our community. So the Web of Trust community. Uh, Houses. I mean, Vitalik has been there. Tim Berners-Lee was at one of our last meetings. He's the creator of the World Wide Web. Um, and it actually got him to give his first kind of push of support uh, for blockchain and the Web of Trust stuff that we had been working on. He was excited to be at the event, so that's cool. Uh, Sovereign's been in our community since the really early days. We also have, I mean, Uport's a part of our community. Essentially, anyone who's building a blockchain-based identity. Web of Trust is also a foundation that's helped to create the standards for DIDs, which are digital identifiers, that all of these different identity standards are using. So the Web of Trust community has essentially created the technical foundation for every other open source project in the industry to build upon. Uh, so does that end, and your first question was about self-sovereign identity? Uh, so what about self-sovereign identity? Yeah. I was just wondering if you yeah. actually developed yeah. um, um, something uh, in that area alongside them, or was yeah. it a competing project? Or yeah, yeah. What? So Web of Trust is a community that is also building a technology. It's a foundation. We have like a Linux model. Culture is the for-profit business. And Web of Trust is our open source foundation to make this for free for everyone forever. Uh, it's actually the original standards built on the Bitcoin blockchain. Christopher Allen, who's the co-author of TLS and SSL, um, was also the principal architect at a company called Blockstream, um, which happens to be, yeah, the, they house a lot of Bitcoin core developers. We also have someone who has stopped working on, or not left, and left probably isn't the right word, but who's um, a Bitcoin core developer has also signed up to help build out this project. Uh, so yeah, that's we we definitely are building technology, and that standard is to make sure that if you're a refugee, and you might never have a host nation of reference, even if you're not a refugee, if you're any kind of global citizen, and you need a way to verify yourself outside of the bounds of a traditional jurisdiction, that you will always, if you have an internet access, or even if you don't, you can actually access. We chose the Bitcoin blockchain for one specific reason. And it's that you can access with a satellite phone the Bitcoin blockchain in places where there is not internet access. And that's key. That's actually a good thing that Blockstream did for the ecosystem. They launched a satellite into space. That means that if you have a phone that can access that satellite, you can access that even if you don't have Wi-Fi. And so if you're a refugee, you can be verified by the members of your community. This man who you built a house with can say, you know, I can verify this person's identity and I can create a claim that they have skills as a carpenter. Uh, same situation for, you know, a, a family of five can verify me, and then they can also say that I have skills teaching English because I've been teaching their daughters English for three years. So whenever you're actually looking at, if you want to apply for a passport or a national citizenship, because some people want that. We can't just force people out of nations by saying, we have to build a better system. 
You can't say, okay, like nations suck, so let's destroy them and then have no alternative. You only make an existing system obsolete by building something that is so fundamentally so much better that the old system does not need to exist anymore. And in order to do that, we're going to have to build an economic engine. So if you think about the way that, if, an, if a person wants to apply for a passport or a citizenship that has no host nation of reference that is a refugee, the current process is a lottery. I'm not here to, for, to tell people what to do, I'm here to give people the freedom and to build a better system fundamentally. So if, if you want to apply for a citizenship, you have the ability to go in and say, instead of participating in a lottery, here are all of the people that have verified me. I'm a trusted member of my community. I'm a leader of my community. And I actually have these tangible skills to offer to your society. So if you have open jobs, let's say you have a ton of open jobs in construction. Someone from a construction company can sponsor someone to come over and do that. So it's, it's really reintegrating. So at a simplistic yeah. level, you're yeah. taking ratings and reviews and you're taking them to a more transparent and a more democratized level. And I, I'm not trying to oversimplify it. I'm saying for the, for the person who's never going to care about sovereign identity for any other reasons, then maybe they just don't even know they have one. Yeah. You're saying, look, if you have these skills and you want to apply these skills, there's a way to be verified in yeah. this web of trust yeah. and just go do it. And they don't have to care whether they're nation states on board or not. You're trying to build a system that almost just like water is downstream for them yeah. to just fall into and go, oh, great, so now I can go get work as a carpenter. Sure. They don't have to become some thought leader or yeah. some technologist. In the short run, and then yeah. let's go to another question. Do we have another one over? Okay, mics, please, oh. run them. Uh, we'll way, come right to, to you guys. So, yeah. so the last piece I was going to say to yeah. his point was, yeah. I heard you mention uh, people that are on board that are helping build out the project. So yeah. is a call to action for people that might be interested listening to this on video yeah. or watching it? or here yeah. to join the developer community. Is yes. that, is that an, how do they do that? Absolutely. And then we're going to your question. We host events for Web of Trust once a quarter, so come out to the events. We're always looking for sponsors who want to get involved in helping to support the open source standard, and we're always looking for technical talent, designers, community builders. If you feel called to this vision, if this resonates with you, if you feel that you want to be a part of this, you have every opportunity in the world to step up and become a leader of this movement. Cool. All right. Question. Uh, so my question is about, uh, well, maybe I'll start with a bit cynical or maybe realistic approach. So yeah. I've been getting an impression that your idea asks all the governments in the world to give up a large share of their power. And I would think yeah. that not a single government is probably uh, willing to do this. So uh, I wonder what approaches and what reactions you've been getting from the governments or from the nation saints in general that you've contacted and what was their, their reaction yeah. to our idea? No, 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 it's the total opposite. I mean, governments, one, want our help um, because they don't know what's going on. And like they're, the Marshall Islands are even looking at launching their own. They released a paper earlier this year in March called the Sovereign Currency Act of 2018. And the Marshall Islands are even looking at launching their own sovereign currency. This was something that was actually tabled in Switzerland that just got pushed back. <laughs> Switzerland was talking about launching a cryptocurrency. So uh, because I've been in the industry for so long, it's kind of the opposite. Governments are coming to me looking for advice. And what we're building is actually giving them a tool that they desperately, desperately, desperately need. Because well, it's, currently, it's open yeah. source, right? So they, well, they can, or, or no? Yeah, I mean, yes, partially. They can participate just as much as someone else can. Yeah, partially because it's open source. But I'm not asking anyone to, it's not about power, right? It's about people. It's about helping people. And governments are not equipped. Governments are 30 years behind on most of their technology. They're not equipped in a lot of instances to do that. So they get excited about the stuff that we're building. You the know, smaller not, not, ones. No, I mean all of them. Not, not in the I don't see larger. Donald Trump rushing your way. Well, I mean like Norway, for well, example. Okay, but I'm saying, yeah. and I'm not, not, not knocking Norway, I'm saying yeah. you're getting traction, it sounds like, in the government. But to his point, yeah. the, the governments that are large enough where power is the incentive, they're going to be late adopters or drug in or resist to, to, to his kind of counterpoint. But it almost doesn't matter because what you're saying is there's enough of a problem and there's enough people out there and we're mobile enough where the government's to do solve for it and persona rights, like what, it, what, what Stan was talking about trying to build on that, almost could de-nation statify it <laughs> because if yeah. it becomes possible for me to have my identity transact, own myself, whatever we thought that means, but it, we don't actually, yeah. then where I reside is not necessarily relevant to where my 
status is. And so you're almost, it almost becomes obsolete, meaning governments still provide certain functions, but the, the true historical nature of tribalism and things like that kind of just morphs. Well, we will demonetize defunct currencies and we will make nations that don't work obsolete. Right. They will just become obsolete as a part of the process. It, it's like, like they don't have to resist it. It almost just becomes a new way and then... So it's, it's beyond just a new way, right? It's about, this is what I mean by if you want to replace an existing system, you have to build something that is fundamentally that so is much better that the old system becomes obsolete. And you know that you've built the right thing when both the change that you're trying to create in the world and the population that can help you get there wants to adopt this and the people that you want to replace. The people that you want to replace want to adopt this as much as the people who need your help, right? And when you sit at that apex, you know that you're building something. You know that you're in the sweet spot, and that's where you want to be. We had one more question. I think we got time for one more question right here. Thank sure. you. I'm, I'm a local here from Vilnius. So uh, you are solving identity, right? I think Bitcoin solved sovereign money. So we have sovereign money. Sovereign identity, uh, what, what is interesting, your thoughts on other things that could be sovereign as well. For example, real estate, for example, healthcare, you know, food, you know, with travel. Yeah. yeah, I mean, anything that you can, anything that you can have contractual ownership of, you can have community, verified community stewardship of those assets, whether that asset is your identity, whether it's your data, whether it's your property, whether it's the world's food supply, right? All of these things can be seen immutably, publicly, uh, and Im embedded on a blockchain. And so this is, yeah, of course, um, we will tokenize the world. And I know that sounds crazy or maybe brash, or especially with all of the horrible ICOs that have launched, it might sound totally ridiculous, but that's just the direction the planet will go in. Um, we have created the internet of money. And in the same way that you used to think about reading a book, like if you think about our grandparents, the way that they received knowledge or the way that they communicated, if you would have told them that one day every person in the world, you'll literally be able to see anyone's face in the world immediately, all of the time, anytime you want. That idea for some people would have been unbelievable. In the same way, two generations after us, uh, the idea that we would have used money in a way that is this transactional, this scarce, and this perverse will seem not only unreasonable, but so unfathomable to people from two generations after us. Money, money will become, we will live in a world without money as we know it today. Blockchain is not just uh, the internet of money, it's the internet of all the value in the world. And so that's really the catalyst of exponential growth into an abundant society. That's what will take us into space, right? If we repurpose the military budget of the United States government alone, and we actually focused our energy on building new civilizations, we could have literally already built an entire civilization in space with that budget alone. The number one setback to the human race right now is the human race. <laughs> Seriously, the number one cause of death in the world right now, this isn't a joke. I looked this up seven times because I couldn't, I, I honestly couldn't believe it was true. I still don't in the back of my mind believe that it's true, but I've had it verified so many times that I have to in some way give it. The number one cause of death in the world right now, can anyone guess what it is? It's suicide. It's literally suicide. The number one risk that we have to the health and well-being of the human race is the human race is you, and is also emotional health, which isn't something that we talked about in this chat, but emotional health is also a core crux of the platform that we are building. Because if we are not focused on how are we gonna have world peace if people don't have peace in here? If you live with all of your unprocessed traumas and you respond to everything as a result of them, right? Peace outside of us starts with peace within. So another core crux of the identity standard is focusing that identity standard um, on restorative justice. And restorative justice being based on healing traumas and creating an emotionally hygienic environment for people across the planet. Um, thank you guys so much. I think there, do we have 
Uh, so yeah. there's obviously probably a thousand hours worth of more questions. I, I want to thank um, you for coming because, thank you. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of the speakers, um, you came on your own volition, and um, and obviously I think everyone's been blessed by that. So uh, they find you at culture with the dot between the U and the R. So cult culture.re, <laughs> culture, yeah. and Tony Lane Casserly, your handle is what? At, uh, at Tony, T-O-N-I-L-A-N-E-C. And um, please continue to pick your mind at the breaks or however long you're around, and uh, get, there's big ideas, and then there's <laughs> big ideas, and this is obviously a big idea. I think that uh, the last thing we'll say, and then Joby, I'm just giving you time to get mic'd. Oh, Joby! perfect, great. Um, so we're going to continue this thread, but um, the, the thing I would say that I think you'd resonate with, because I resonated with everything you yeah. finished with there, is I learned a long time ago, human beings don't resist change, they resist being changed. And, and so yeah. then you go back to Gandhi, right, and, and be the change you wish to see, and I think you're a perfect example of that, so I commend yeah. you for that. I think we can all follow in your footsteps that way. And um, that's a call to action. Get involved, join the developer community, figure out, you know, how you can help. So thank, thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank Tony you. Lane Casserly. All right. Woo!